Welcome to Module 2 of, hand, of the Hand in Hand training. I, it is a pleasure to be here. My name is Linda Farrar. I'm a registered nurse and a licensed administrator in the state of Kansas. And I, I want to give you some thank yous, first of all, to CMS for producing this excellent training, but also to this facility, Derby Health and Rehab, and all of you for coming. We're, we're talking about dementia and how to improve dementia care. And this module is focusing on abuse. So why do you think, and actually there's going to be another module this afternoon on abuse. Why do you think we're so concerned about the, the uh, possibility of abuse in dementia elders? Because they can't tell us. Because they can't tell us. They can. But we have to be really astute in what we're, in how we figure out what they're saying to us. What else? They may not remember it. They may not remember it. Remember we talked in Module 1 about short-term memory is your weakest memory. Short-term memory lasts anywhere from five minutes to a couple days. So getting facts about abuse from them is going to be very difficult, isn't it? Do, does abuse actually happen to long-term care elders? Yes. Oh man, that's sad, isn't it? It's sad that we have to even be thinking about abuse. Until about three years ago, I didn't really think it happened. Now I thought neglect probably happened occasionally because we just can't get around everything we need to be, get done. But I didn't really think abuse happened. But the more I'm in facilities, and not this one, of course, but the more I'm in facilities, I think it's, it's starting to be evident that abuse really does happen. And oftentimes it happens to elders with dementia. So it's important for us to know what abuse really is. So what do you think of when you hear the word abuse? Verbal abuse. Verbal abuse. So, like, tell me what that would be like. Being rude or having an attitude with the resident or cursing at them. Rude, having an attitude, cursing at them. What else? Physical. Physical. What would that be? Mm -hmm. Hitting. Hitting. Mm -hmm. Hitting. Mm -hmm. Physically forceful. Yanking them. Mm -hmm. Physically forcing them to do things. Touching them without their permission. Either. Touching them without their permission. Yeah. Anybody else? Sexual abuse. Sexual abuse. What is, would that involve? Even just taking pictures of stuff and stuff like showering or anything. Taking like pictures of them in compromised situations, or any t taking a picture of them when they didn't want their picture taken. Mm -hmm. So anything else? Any other kind of abuse? How about neglect? <laughs> what What does that involve? Ignoring them. Ignoring them. Not changing them. Not changing them. Not repositioning them. Not doing oral care. Leaving them to their own devices. Leaving them to their own devices. Well, they can do that for themselves. Yeah. Okay. So this is the module objectives. You'll be able to understand CMS's definition of, of abuse. You will be able to identify different types of abuse. You will be able to recognize abuse. And you will be able to identify reporting procedures for abuse. So let's talk about the types of abuse. The goals for this lesson are to understand the language used in the CMS definition of abuse. Understand that we must follow the CMS definition. We must follow the CMS definition of abuse. And then we will learn about different types of abuse so that you're able to recognize abuse if it would happen to one of your elders, okay? So the definition is willful infliction of injury. Willful, you decide you're going to do it. There is an intent involved in abuse. You intend to hurt somebody, okay? Unreasonable confinement, what might that be? 
restraints. Like restraints, actually, absolutely. What kind of restraints? Putting the bed rails up or bed rails. Putting pillows all around them so you can get up. Pillows all around them. Lifting the recliner feet up so that they're not able to push it down. Mm -hmm. now. Yes, lifting the recliner feet up to keep them in the chair. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a physician order to elevate the feet in the recliner, right. then and 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 you are do following a physician order and they could let you know that they want it out, then that would not be right. confinement. What else? Taking the gate belt and wrapping around that little chair so the patient <gasps> I've seen people do that. Taking the gate belt and wrapping it around the wheelchair so that they so they're using it basically as a wheelchair belt mm -hmm. but they're not. Right. Yeah. yeah. What else? Closing them in the room? Mm -hmm. Yes. Taking them to the If you're going to act like this in the dining room, I'm going to take you to your room. How about, uh, we're going to see an example here in a little bit where you somebody is pushed up in the dining room facing the wall. Would that be confinement? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It might be. Intimidation. What would that be? Trying to scare them. Trying to scare them. Threatening them. I'm sorry? Threatening them. Threatening them. Absolutely. And yelling at them. If you continue to do this, this is what's going to happen. Yelling at them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I heard a story recently about um, someone, a lady with dementia was crying out frequently, and that happens, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. For good reason, it happens. And uh, the nurse aide told them, it's against the law for you to continue to do this. <laughs> We're going to call the police. And actually turned a siren of her phone app on, on a siren mm -hmm. and said, here, see, here they come. Oh, wow. Now, it didn't change the behavior. Mm -hmm. The lady's short-term memory was almost gone. And it didn't change her desire or her fear or her pain, or her need to be around somebody. If anything, that would probably just amplify it. Absolutely. She would, she would anxiety. Absolutely. So intimidation is one. How about punishment? Do we ever punish them? Shouldn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're right, because they're adults, and they have free choice, even if they have dementia. Now, what if they're doing something that's really putting them in danger? Maybe just redirect them redirect them give them other options other options that are meaningful to them if you have somebody that is wandering aimlessly about the facility and trying to exit seek rather than just say no 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 you can't go out there no you can't go out there give them something to do that means that is of interest to them one of the stories that I tell when I teach dementia um, to other groups is that what is valuable and meaningful to me is not valuable and meaningful to everybody. One of the things that brings real quality of life to me is watching Matlock. You, well, anybody in here know what Matlock is? Yeah. He, Matlock reminds me of my dad, but I love mysteries. I listen to audio mystery books. And But my husband cannot stand Matlock. Complete waste of time. That's ridiculous. He goes to the basement and watches bicycle racing. <laughs> Mind-numbing, folks. But he's an engineer. He rides for pleasure. He and and, and um, some of our family members have actually ridden across Kansas. Now, who would be oh, wow. dumb enough to bike across Kansas. <laughs> that would be absolutely ridiculous when there's a car there <laughs> that will take you. But he watches, the, he looks at the bikes and he looks at the drafting and he looks at the teamwork and all of those things and he really enjoys watching competitive bicycle racing. I wouldn't walk to my living room to watch bicycle racing. What is meaningful to one person is not meaningful to the other, right? So rather than tell somebody, you cannot go out the door, and if you continue to try this, you will sit down. And then forcefully putting them in the chair 
give them something to do that means something to them. Depriving them of goods and services necessary for their well-being. Now, who gets to say if something is providing to, for their well-being? What my, my guess is that my well-being is not met the same way yours is. Is that right? So we have to get to know them. You have to get to know them. You have to write down some very important things so that we all know some things about them because they can't remember, right? Things like your favorite color. So that if they started walking around and trying to get out the door, you could say, you know, Linda, I think I heard somewhere that green is your favorite color. Do you want to go do some painting? I've got some green paint, just came in. Would that make me feel good? Yes. Yes. How about favorite flower? How about favorite smell? What do you like to smell? Clean Bacon. and fresh. Clean and fresh. Bacon. Bacon? Bacon. Oh, and bacon. bacon. <laughs> 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 I've got a bacon to my own cell. Yeah. Baking. Yeah. So maybe it's a bread machine mm -hmm. or cookies, bacon. Are, do you ever bake cookies out in your house? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. yeah. And, and the food <laughs> just kind of wafts around, and it makes you feel good inside, doesn't it? Yeah. So, so what's your favorite smell? Um, what's your favorite uh, song? Not the favorite kind of music, but your favorite song. Who can tell me your favorite song? That if you heard it, if you had some dementia and you were starting to get kind of upset, you would, if, you, if we put that on, you would, it, it would make you feel better. It would make you not want to go out the door. <laughs> you don't have a favorite song? Not everybody likes music. She does. She does. <laughs> well, it's not going to tell us. Um, does anybody have one that they would share? <laughs> I like uh, God Gave Me You by, uh, what's his name? <laughs> I like him too. Yeah. Blake Shelton. That one. He's <laughs> Shelton. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have a. So if you heard that song and you were feeling kind of uh, at loose ends, would it make you feel better? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> so anyway, it's depriving residents of, some, of goods and services. For example, one of the best, biggest examples is taking a call right away. So they can't get help, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So these are the types of abuse. Verbal. Man, aren't words just hurtful sometimes? They didn't, they, people intend for those words to be hurtful sometimes. Mental. Physical. Sexual. Neglect on the other hand, is not doing something that contractually you are supposed to do. Not giving baths at the, at the routine, the schedule that the elder has said they want them is neglect. Not doing oral care. Uh, leaving somebody wet. Telling someone to just use the brief. I'm really busy. I don't have time to take it to the bathroom. You've got a brief on. Just use the brief. That never happens, does it? Shouldn't. No, it shouldn't, but it does. Um, involuntary seclusion, that's like shutting them in somewhere. Someplace, it, involuntary means they didn't decide to do it, and seclusion means being alone. And misappropriation of resident property, what does that mean? Using their body spray and spray it on yourself. Using their body spray and spraying it on yourself. Yes. What else? Stealing from people, lotion, isn't it? Maybe yeah. using their lotion. Or it could be as innocent as using the roommate's brief for this other resident because they're out and because it's a long way to the supply room. That's misappropriation of property biggest example I've ever experienced in my working career. When I first started in the business, um, at about 11, our shifts worked 
um, 3 to 11, 11 to 7, 7 to 3. And at about 11.30, uh, an, an alert and oriented elder actually turned her call light on and said, when, is the, when are the x-ray people coming? This is 11.30 at night. And the charge nurse who was in the room with her said, x-ray? I, I don't know that you have an x-ray scheduled. And she said, well, that young man that was in here said to give him all my jewelry because the x-ray people were coming. Mm -hmm. He had stolen it. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. We got it back. It was at a pawn shop, and mm -hmm. uh, we got it back. But that's exploitation. That's wow. misappropriation of resident yeah. property. It can go from that extreme to the brief extreme. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it seems innocent, doesn't it, to just grab a brief from the roommate? Or to pick up a piece of candy that the family brought in for the elder? Or to eat a cookie that the family brought in? It seems innocent, but it isn't. That's their stuff. And unless they give you permission, you cannot do it. Now, can you all take gifts from elders? That's by company policy, or that's what's the right thing? So if I'm an elder and you are my caregiver and I really love you because they do love you and they try to give you a gift and you say, I'm sorry, but I can't accept that. That's hurtful. So what are the other options? Take it and bring it back later. Yes, <laughs> you can take it and bring it back later. You can take it, call the family, and tell them that they've done this and that you are going to donate it to the employee fund committee or whatever committee you have. Mm -hmm. Or you can take it and give it to the family. But sometimes you have to make the elder feel like, because you're, you're giving lots of yourself and they want to give back. And it's okay, but you can't have it. Okay. Some places also have a monetary limit, like if it's worth more than three dollars or something like that, then, or less than three dollars, you can take it. Okay. Verbal abuse is spoken, written, or gestured language. What would be some? We we can pretty much understand spoken. That's saying something to somebody. Written. My guess is. That doesn't happen very often. It can, but I don't think it happens because it's hard evidence, right? But gestured language, what would be some of that? Mocking. Mocking. Oh, honey, how are you today, sweetie? Grandma. Oh, please. That is so disrespectful. You ever hear that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm very disrespectful to the person you're talking to. What else? Like actually flipping them off. Actually flipping them <laughs> off. Did you get that on tape? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Any other kind of gestures you might use? How about just rolling your eyes? Or how about, what do you need? When someone has dementia, in mid-stage on, they will always read your body language first. Mm -hmm. Always. Before they hear. Because there is a physiologic delay in processing from the actual body to the brain, they will always read your body language first. So if you walk up to them, what do you need now? What did you, what did you, what was my intent? What was I saying to you? It, what I, what did I mean? But it wasn't very um, inviting. Right. I probably, probably what you heard was, I don't have a time or the interest to take care of you right now. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It includes insulting, offensive, or disapproving terms to any resident. You're just a dirty old man. Pretty offensive, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Regardless of age, ability to comprehend, or disability. Okay, so what's mental abuse? It's humiliation, it's harassment, it's threats of punishment, and it's deprivation. That's mental abuse. 
depriving them of something that you know they would like to have. In the first video that we saw, we saw the gentleman want to sit with his friend. Mm -hmm. And they wheeled right past and he sat at a table with another lady and they didn't have any conversation. Or what could be some other things that would bring value to you, your life, that somebody might not let you have? If you want to go to a certain activity and they don't help you, you know, get up and get out of your room. Exactly. If they, if you want to go to an activity and nobody helps you. Or even like falls under privacy but saying, hey, so and so's wet, can you go change them? Mm -hmm. In the dining room. Right, in the dining room or in activity room or at some, yeah. Absolutely, that's humiliating, isn't it? Or how about you're sitting at a dining room table and you're assisting someone to eat and there's another staff member across the table assisting another person and you're talking to each other but you're not talking to the elder. And you're talking about something that can be offensive like the date on the weekend and what all in great detail happened things like that harassment is just picking at them picking at them threats of punishment if you don't stop calling out i'm calling the police and deprivation is just depriving them of the services physical abuse is hitting slapping, pinching, kicking, corporal punishment. These are the things that we think never happens, but they do. They do happen. And you all need to know what to look for. Sexual abuse is unwelcome sexual advances, unwanted touching, request for sexual favors, Offensive sexual comments, rape, or sodomy. Unfortunately, these happen too sometimes. Not at this facility. Neglect. Failure to provide goods or services necessary for well-being. These can be physical needs, mental needs, or social needs. So if the elder on admission uh, tells you that they love Matlock, and you won't do anything to facilitate that, that's neglect. And you, and if you make me go see bicycle racing, then it's abuse. <laughs> okay, it could be just ignoring the resident's need for help, not providing food or water. If you do not get up now, you're not gonna have breakfast. Or, and I've heard this happen, if you don't get up now, it'll be cereal. You can't have a hot breakfast. Now that, you're set up in a much different way where there's a kitchen right there and they can have anything they want anytime. But not only for facility is set up like that. Neglect could be ignoring the need for help, not providing food or water, and withholding care. Any questions about that? Involuntary seclusion is separation of the elder from other residents, from their room. It's confinement to the elder's room or other area, and it is it must be against the elder's will to be classified as involuntary seclusion. The elder must be able to express to you that they don't want to do that, or they do want to do this, and you won't let them. Misappropriation of resident fund property is stealing just taking the rings, that's misappropriation. Deliberately misplacing belongings or money, hiding it from them. Using a resident's belongings without their consent, right? Using their body spray for your own purposes without their consent or for another resident. That's the brief, grabbing the brief. Doesn't it make sense though? I mean, they're they're on Medicaid. The government bought it all. No, it's theirs. Once you have assigned it to them, it is theirs. And um, it is using another residence for another resident without their permission. So, in summary, 
we've learned about the CMS definition. Who can tell me what it is? Just in general, you don't have to do it word for word. Mental, physical, sexual, emotional, sexual. Right. Yes. And the different types of abuse. We've talked about that. And then some examples of these types of abuse. So let's talk about recognizing abuse. The goal of this lesson is that you would be able to recognize abuse and you would understand why situations might escalate to abuse. Do you have some understanding that, I mean, there would be some situations where it might get clear out of hand, right? How about resident to resident? Mm -hmm. yes. It absolutely can happen. It absolutely does happen. Because of that lack of social awareness, that lack of here's my space, here's your space, I'm not going to get in it, that's gone. Or reaching out and grabbing you in a place that you're not fond of me grabbing. Yeah, so resident to resident, and they actually walk up and just slug the other one sometimes, don't they? <laughs> yeah, it does. So we need to know, be able to recognize when a situation is escalating and then what are we going to do? Try to neutralize the situation. Yes. First thing we always do in an abusive situation is get the people to safety. Mm -hmm. Always. We will get people to safety. And we will understand why they might escalate. Sorry my visit's so short today. I have to go pick yeah, up Katie from her music lessons. But I can bring her by on Sunday and she can tell you all about it. Tell her to bring her flute and play for me. <laughs> I will, Mom. Oh, I have to go. Um, Mom, where's your watch? Your anniversary watch from Dad. Oh, I keep it in the top dresser drawer. It's just too fancy to wear every day. And frankly, I don't need to know what time it is. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I love that watch. It's so beautiful. Well, I have to go, and I think Tony is ready to take you to therapy. So, bye, Mom. Thank you, Tony. What types of abuse did you see? The wrong eyes, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the much neglect. The neglect. What else? Stealing. Stealing. Mm -hmm. Exploitation of elder property. Yeah. Wait, wait. Yes? I got to go to the bathroom. You have got to be kidding me. I just got you back into bed. I know, but I really need to go to the bathroom. I can't take you right now. Mr. Sampson's already pulled his cord three times. You don't want him to get all mad at me again, do you? No, but I need to go to the bathroom. I hear you, but you got a couple of clean pads under you, so just go. But you are here. I've got to go to the bathroom. Listen. What difference does it make if you go now or you go later? Either way, you're going to be wet in the morning. I have this rash. The nurse I never saw anything on you when I got you out of the shower. Now, who are you going to listen to? Look, I got to go. And I say, if you got to go, just go. They'll clean you up in the morning. Good night. Mm. Mm. So what type of abuse did you see? Verbal. Neglect. neglect. Absolutely, we saw neglect. We actually saw abuse, in my opinion, because she told the person she has a rash. Right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, also, when she was tucked around and he started slamming her hand down. Yep. Yep. But she was frustrated. Yeah. Is there anybody in here that doesn't have enough to do while you're on shift? I didn't think so. 
I know two things about everybody in here. The first one is you don't have enough time to get done everything that you are need to get done in a day, do you? you? There's just no way. And they just keep adding. The list just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the second thing is you don't get paid enough. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> we live in a society that we pay people more to flip hamburgers than we do to care for frail elders. It is a societal issue nationwide, and I can't fix it. I wish I could fix it for you. So I know that people get task burdened. They get frustrated because somebody is all the time telling them to do something more. And you can't pay your bills with what you make. It's hard, isn't it? But let me just give you a clue. It is not the responsibility or the fault of the elders that we care for. They are why we are here. And we have to keep our mission in front of us all the time. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Morning, Mrs. Anderson. Time for your bath. Come on, Mrs. Anderson. It's 9.45. Time for your bath. Not now. I'm watching this. Not now. You're on the list today. You can watch TV when you get back. I'm watching this. You are taking a bath. No! I don't want to! Come on. Look, I just want to do my job and get you in the bath. I don't want a bath. Have you met Lester? Lester is just down the hall, and he likes helping special little queens like you. No! No! Okay. I've had it. Just because you're in rehab, you think you're better than everyone else. Well, you're not. You can't even wipe your own butt. You're just a mean little witch that needs me more than she thinks she does. Okay, this is what's happening. You're gonna sit there and you're gonna shut up. I'm gonna go get Lester and you're having a bath now. So what kind of abuse did we see? Intimidation. Intimidation. <laughs> what? Tell me about when was she intimidated? Well, she shut the door and she her did. by the face. And was Shutting like, that door was scary, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I thought she was going to slap her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she did grab her chin. What else? She mocked her. She humiliated her. Mm -hmm. She did. She called her names. Mm -hmm. She threatened her with somebody else. She threatened her with Lester. <laughs> Do we have a Lester here? No. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay. Does this happen to yeah. I mean, she has. Now, in defense of the girl, she's apparently a bath aid. And she has this long list of baths that she needs to get done this week, right? Mm -hmm. Today. And we don't have time to mess with these people who are trying to watch Wheel of Fortune, for heaven's sake. Right? Mm -hmm. Or The Price is Right, I guess. It sounded like The Price is Right. I don't know. What. Anyway. But she should have just gone to another resident and then came back. Exactly. And here is the thing. How many of you, you know when they come in, you all get a preference list, right? You do. Now, do you like your baths on the day shift or the evenings or the night shift or whatever? And do you like a shower or a tub bath? Mm -hmm. And the, then do they go on a schedule or do you ask them every day? Well, we have a bath schedule, but we switch our baths if they want them at night. And like, okay. we'll switch to somebody who doesn't. Want so I guess I need to know whether you have an institution or a home. I believe we have a home. Okay, so tell me about how that fits in with, we have a bath list. 
We switch them. Because at my house, I take a shower when I'm going somewhere. I took one this morning, by the way. <laughs> it's pretty hot in here. So I take a shower when I'm going somewhere. I take a bath if I'm cold in the evenings, usually right before I go to bed. So I don't want that written down. I, the best example I have is I visited with an elder in another facility and she, uh, she had apple juice in front of her because on, when they came in, they got preferences and she wanted apple juice and she pulled me down and she said, but I didn't want it every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> And I said, what would you like to have, you know? But we do that. We get their preferences, we write it down, and then that's it. Well, I think the bath list is more of just to make sure that the people who are unable to tell you, I want a bath today, make sure that they are um, constantly getting them. Because um, also, you know, if they, they want an extra bath or they need an extra bath, yeah. then it happens. Then they can have one. But I think sure. that's what the bath list kind of refers back to. But you, but that not every facility runs like that. So we have to be careful about making sure that today you get what you want. Because it's not the same as yesterday, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so did you see any other kind of abuse? We saw physical, we saw mental, we saw social because the girl was trying to deprive her of the game show she wanted to watch, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we pretty much hit the whole thing. She physically grabbed her, probably not hard enough to um, to cause bruises. Right. Kind of know what the limits are. Right. Yeah, enough to scare her, enough to cause the tear. We hurt her. They hurt her. likely met Lester, huh? Mm -hmm. Maybe. What do we see? What sexual. do you think? Sexual. And how did, what makes you think that? Yeah, he was, he came out. his name tag off. Right, right. What did we see in her? She's crying. She's crying. She was in fetal position. And what happens when we're in the fetal position? We're guarding, right? We're, we're protecting ourselves. It's the only way, because it's, it's the most protective position that we have. So, yeah. So, if you walked down the hall and saw him coming out of the room, what would you do? Beat him up. <laughs> Where's the siren? <laughs> what would be the first thing you did? Check on her. You would check on her and make sure that she is safe might not ever feel safe again, I will tell you. This was an intentional sexual abuse. I have a story about um, in the facility where I retired from, we had three dimension neighborhoods. We had an early stage dimension AL, we had a mid stage and we had an end stage. And in our end stage neighborhood, we had a lady who resisted bathing. You ever have that? Mm -hmm. This lady kicked and bit and scratched and spit, and every time we took her into the bathing room, we had a fight. So we tried all kinds of things. How many of you have seen Bathing Without a Battle, that, that video? Well, again, CMS sent one to every facility, but it's been a number of years ago. <laughs> Ask your administrative staff 
to see bathing without a battle. They have a lot of really good suggestions for people who resist bathing. So we watched that. We tried everything. We would take her in the shower room and turn the water on and then take her clothes off. All of the, we tried everything. About six months after she had lived there, we had a care plan meeting, and the, we were talking about this resistance to bathing. And the daughter said, I don't remember if I told you, but she was raped as a teenager in a public bathing area, bathroom. Remember I told you long-term memory is the strongest, mm -hmm. short-term memory is the weakest? Mm -hmm. Every time we took her into that cold room, she was reliving it every time. Oh my gosh, it broke our hearts. We never bathed her again. We never took her in that bathing unit again. She never had an odor. She never had skin breakdown. We bathed her at the sink. She was happy. She was secure. She did not fight us. We have to pay attention to what they're telling us. She could not tell us, please don't take me in there. It reminds me of when I was raped as a teenager. But she told us, and we didn't listen. For six months, we tortured her. Because we have this list. We have to bathe them. There is nothing in the regulation that says you have to bathe somebody in a public shower room. Nothing. You do have to keep them clean. You have to keep good hygiene, all of those things no skin breakdown, all of those things. But there's nothing that says you have to take them in the shower room, shower them or put them in a tub. Listen to what they're telling you. Hey, what time you got, Arthur? 10 minutes, it's almost that time. Oh, thank goodness. If you told me it was one, I think I'd just collapse. I'm so beat. And like yesterday, huh? And the I day before that, home. yep. I have to go home. It's your turn. Sorry, I was here till 3.30 with her yesterday. Hey, come on, Cindy. It's my day to pick up my kids from daycare. Well, every day is my day to pick up my kids. See you tomorrow, Arthur. Okay. Have fun. I need to go home. I need to go home. I need to go home. I want 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 to go home. It's time to be waiting. I want to go home. Okay, let's go. Oh, I need to go home. I need to go home now. Miss Caputo, you are home. You live here now. No, it, it's time. My children, they are there. They're going to need Miss Caputo, dinner. your children are grown. They don't even live around here anymore. No. Hey, there's a movie play. You like movies, right? I bet there's a great movie playing. Let's go see the movie. No, no, no. Yeah, no, yeah, no. let's go I see the movie. I have to go home now. Miss Caputo, you live here now. I do not live here. I do not live here. Miss Caputo. I do not live here. Miss Caputo, you live here now. Let's no, go see the movie. No, I don't. I don't live here. I want to go home. I want to go home. I don't live here. Let's go. Yeah, you're not going anywhere here. now. You're just going to go to your room, OK? You're going with me now, all right? Home. What are you still doing here, Arthur? You get off at 3, don't you? Just go. I got her. You can have her. I'm out of here. <sighs> All right. Uh, let me help you with this. Can, can you help me go home? I don't like him. I was looking all over to give you your snack anyway. You ready? I really need to go home. I understand, I Mrs. Caputo. Home. I want to go home. All right. All right. I want to go home. So what type or types of abuse did we see here? Physical. Physical. Mental. Mental. Seclusion? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Probably. Scary, isn't it? Because he was staying over. He'd had a hard day. He needed to get out. He just got too much of a hurry. What, what do you think 
So she just kept talking about, I need to go home. My children are there. My children are there. You think she was, remember long-term memory and short-term memory? She probably needed to get home to her children. He didn't go into her world. He exactly. He did not go into her world. He wanted her to come to his world. And they cannot do it. Remember the pictures of the brains? Can't do it. Can't do it. So how long have you been here? How long? Yeah. How long? For, for a while? For a while. Ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you have children? Yes. Yeah? How many? Four. Four? four. I, I, well, I've got a daughter. Oh, I've got one daughter. Nice. Yeah. You have girls? A boy? Yes. Girls? Girl. Oh, girl. Girl. Oh. I can't take this anymore. Oh, dear. Arthur, come here. Just look at him. We can't eat with him at our table. Not at our table. Well, there's nowhere else to put him. Put him in his room. Put him over there. Put him anywhere but here. It's disgusting and we don't like it. We don't like it. And we don't like him. We don't like him. I understand. I, I wouldn't want to sit next to him either. He's messier than my one-year-old. Way he drools when he eats. I wouldn't want to sit next to him either, but All right, fine, I'll find somewhere for him. Let's go, big guy. On your own now. Seriously? Now I've got another mess to clean up. I can't believe you did that. Oh. You know, you really are messier than my one year old. Just more for me to do, and I always get stuck doing it. this time? Verbal. Verbal. What? Mental. Mental. Seclusion. Seclusion. Absolutely. <laughs> also, did we see that he was deprived of something that he actually needed? Mm -hmm. Did you see where he placed it on the bedside table? What about the resident to resident? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? It was, it was certainly degrading. In front of him, they were talking about him drooling and that he's spilling his food and... Saying they didn't like him. They didn't like him. We don't like him. So what would have been an opportunity to intervene? What could we have done? Helped him. Yes. We could have helped him to eat. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Anything else? Special utensils, maybe. Special no, utensils. Mm -hmm. How about sitting at a table, not a bedside table, but a table where he was not, because these other two ladies, mm -hmm. they have rights too. Mm -hmm. If they truly are um, offended by other residents, don't they have the right to eat in the most pleasant environment as possible? Mm -hmm. Absolutely they do. They have that right. So we have to figure out what's good for him and good for them all at the same time, and we can do that. Maybe it's eating at a different time, all together. And, and somebody, is, and a staff member or another elder is sitting at the table with him and they're talking to him. Mm -hmm. This business of, you're worse than my one-year-old. Remember, verbal, they hear your nonverbal communication before they ever hear your words. Okay. One other, I have two hot buttons. 
One of them is home-like. You, like, you want your facility to be home-like? Yes. The reality is, for the elders that live here, is this is their home. Mm -hmm. It's not home-like. The reality is, it's what you make it. This is their home. Mm -hmm. So stop using home-like because it's not going to be, I've lived in a number of places during my own life, and none of them are the same. This one won't be the same either. But it is the only home I have. I've given up everything to live here. So stop making it home-like and make it home. Second thing is, the second hot button is put. You know, my children have all told me, I don't know if this one has, but the other two have said, Mom, we're not going to put you in a nursing home. We put things places. We don't put people. Do we? Do we? So when, when you have an admission coming in, do you plan what room they go to? Yes. Okay. So do you ever say, we're going to put her in um, 329? Yeah. Really? Well, how about if we, she's going to live? Or, but putting when you put somebody somewhere they become an object when in fact they are going to move into 329 and that's going to be their home even on your subacute folks your post acute folks that are going to go home it is the home that they have for a little while right we have to stop thinking of them as objects and when we do that we will start seeing them as people Right? Mm -hmm. You disagree? Mm -hmm. yeah. So s don't put me somewhere. Help me find a place to live. I don't want to live with my children. It's not a big surprise. My children live chaotic, busy lives. I want to be with friends, peers, my own, my own friends, my own age. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to be put anywhere. I think she's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, in this lesson, we've learned about recognizing abuse. Did anybody have any trouble at all seeing the abuse that we saw in these videos? And how situations can escalate into abuse? Okay, some signs of abuse. The goals here are that we'll recognize signs that abuse may have occurred, and we realize the impact of abuse. To go home. I have to go home. I have to go home. Ow. I have to go home. Hey, Gloria. How's Mrs. C today? Who? Mrs. Caputo. Oh, she's doing okay. I just gave her her snack. Hey, Mrs. C. How are you today? I have to go home. No one will help me. Yeesh, I didn't mean to hurt you. Can I have a look at that for you? Oh. oh. What happened? Did you bump your arm? I don't know. Listen, I think I probably should get a nurse for this. Uh, man, I wonder if Gloria knows what happened. Um, why don't you just stay here and have your cookies and juice? and I will be right back, okay? Yes, but I need to go home. I have to go home. Listen, I understand. I'll be right back. I promise. Something might have happened to Mrs. Wood. She's not letting them touch her. She did this, didn't she? She guarded. She pulled back so that they wouldn't touch her. What's the obvious sign? Her arm. Her arm. Wow. She got hurt, right? When when the, the male caregiver grabbed her, she got hurt. Yeah, and you know their skin is so fragile, he probably didn't mean to hurt her, but he did grab her. Anything else that you saw? 
I want to say when she said she wanted to go home. Maybe she knew she had something and she had to get home to fix it. Could be. Could be. Could very well be. Thanks, Lester. Oh, hey. Looks like your show is all over. Too bad. You know, if you hadn't caused so much trouble refusing to take your bath, you wouldn't have missed so much of it. Anyway, I'm all through with you. Hope you go home soon. Knock, knock, Mrs. Anderson. This is Bill from therapy. You have an appointment with no, us today. No, no, go away. Uh, Mrs. Anderson, it's me, Bill. No, leave me alone. It's me, Bill. It's okay. Oh, you're shaking. Let me take this wet towel off your shoulder. That must be uncomfortable for you. No price is right today? Your favorite? Let me change that for you. Oh, you're shivering. Here, let me put this sweater on. Hey, I'd be cold too with wet hair if I had any hair. <laughs> is it okay if I dry your hair a little? I promise I'll be careful. And yeah, doesn't that sweater feel warmer? Is it okay if I dry your hair just a little? Okay. There we go. And yeah. does that feel better? Okay. Miss Anderson, it's such a pretty day out there today. Let's be a little late for therapy and take the long scenic route and walk outside. It'll feel good to have the sun dry your hair instead of me. Does that sound good to you? Okay. Before we go, can you hand me my phone? I need to call my daughter. Sure, I can do that for you. Here you are, Mrs. Anderson. Okay, here we go. Okay, watch your legs now. There we go. What are some signs of something that might have happened that the bill would have noticed? Crying. Crying. Shaking. Shaking. Resistance. She pulled back, absolutely, and she was not going to have anything to do with it for a while, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's exactly right. Hi, Mr. Maurer. It's Wendy. I've come to invite you to the ice cream social. We're having a group from the local school band performing for us. Oh, I know how you love music, and I wanted you to know about this. Are you sure? I made sure to have your favorite flavor, mint chocolate chip.
Not yet. Okay, then put your card. Put your card. Okay. Hey, how you doing? Good. Did you ever get Mr. Mauer to attend that ice cream social? Oh. No, he refused. Oh, Sue, I, 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 you know, I don't know what to do. He, he always used to love to be around everybody. Yeah. All of a sudden, he just refuses to come out of his room for anything. I know. That's not like him at all. No, it's not like him. I've, I've talked to all the aides, and nobody has any ideas. You know, I just, I just feel so bad for him. Oh, keep trying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks. I'll talk to you later. Okay. okay. All righty. So what are some signs that something might have happened to him? We know that what happened. We saw what happened in the dining room. So what are some signs? Behavior changes. What? Behavior changes. Yes, he's had behavior changes. We know that it's not like him. He wasn't eating. He wasn't eating. In fact, it didn't look to me like he'd taken a single bite. He may have. And where was he? He was in his room. He didn't want to go out because the people at the table said, we don't like him. And the, the young staff member said, you're worse than my one-year-old. So you can see he was probably um, a little depressed because he, you could see where um, his, when she said they had chocolate ice cream, that it caught his attention and then he just kind of veered away yep. from it. He never looked at her. He wouldn't make eye contact with her. And he w didn't say a word, right. not a single word. Okay, so some signs of abuse, Buses, bruises, scratches, abrasions, pain, fear, trembling, cowering, acting submissive, hesitating to talk or talking less, loss of eye contact, vacant stares, changes in behavior or mood, depression, crying, being suspicious of others, being aggressive, being defiant, belligerent or hostile, withdrawing, isolating, losing interest, changes in attitude toward caregivers, and nervousness, jumpiness, pulling away. So we've learned there's signs that, that abuse may have occurred and what the impact is. Reporting. The goals here are to understand that you're required to report, period. You're required to report. If you suspect, even suspect, because if if you suspect and nothing, it didn't really happen, okay. But if you suspect and it did really happen and you don't stop it, it will continue. And learn how to report. There are state and federal laws that require the reported abuse be reported. Nurse aides are most likely you are the number, nurse aides are the number one people that will recognize that something's wrong. Professionally and legally, nursing home staff is required to report all nursing home staff. I don't care if you're restorative, nursing, dietary, social service. I don't care what your role is. You must report immediately to your administrator. What does that mean, immediately? At the time that you've noticed something. What's the first thing we do? We get the elder to safety, and then we're going to report it. Now, if you want to report it to a charge nurse or somebody else in the building, a, a unit manager or whoever, house supervisor, that's fine. But you must report to the administrator, and do not take it for granted that the person that you report it to will. If they say, you, you're going to say, well, I need to contact the administrator, and they're going to say, I'll take care of it. You're going to say, what? I'll take care of it. Let's do it together. If they want to be involved in it, that's fine. But your responsibility is to report it. You, it should also be reported to an ombudsman, perhaps local police. If it is a major crime, it has to be reported to police within two hours. Protective ser Adult protective survey uh, services and the survey agency. 
the nursing home must report it to the state agency within 24 hours. They must then investigate it and, and turn that investigation in within five days, working days. You must report both to the state agency and local law enforcement. If there's serious injury, that doesn't necessarily mean even just physical harm. You have set in your policy a limit of when you have to report to the police. If it is exploitation or theft, you have a dollar amount that your facility has set. Must with, it has to be reported within two hours. Everybody else no later than 24. Nursing home, the facility, the owners, the corporate folks, may not retaliate against someone who reports abuse. If you think that's happening, if you are threatened for calling something in or reporting it, you need to contact the state agency yourself, okay? That's who you need to call. You need to call the hotline. Where do you find the hotline number? There is a hotline poster in every facility. It's required. During survey, they're looking for it. Oh, that's in the break room. Okay. It's also available to elders. There, it's it's posted somewhere available it's to elders. It's a, in it's every home. home. Yeah, in every house. house. Mm -hmm. Good. So you have access to the number. You don't have to tell anybody at the facility that you called it in. You don't have to. There cannot be retribution for you calling it in. You're going to need to report who, what, where, and when it this happened. You're going to give the resident's name, age, and gender, the name of the nursing home, the people responsible for the resident's care, who you think is the suspected abuser. The state calls that the alleged perpetrator. Be, give them name and description, be specific, and then give them the names of witnesses. You're going to tell them what happened, what did you see, what did you hear, what was the extent of the harm that you could observe. What signs of abuse and neglect did you see? What did the elder say? It's one of the most important things we do. What did the elder, even people with dementia, right at the time of an incident, can tell you what happened? What did other people say? Now, I'm going to strongly suggest that you not go into the break room and have a conversation about it. But what do other people legitimately say about the incident? and then stop talking about it. Don't talk to people who can't fix it. it won't do any good. And have there been any previous incidents? Where do you think it happened? When did it happen, both the date and the time? You're going to give an interpretation. You're not going to give your interpretation. You're going to give the facts. You're not, well, I think she had a really bad night last night. I think her home life is really messed up right now. Just the facts, okay? You're going to tell them what you know, not what you guess, not what you think, what you know. You're going to use resident, reported, or suspected abuse. You're not going to use the word victim. That is a police term. Alleged is a police term. We're not going to worry about that. We don't use those terms. You're going to describe. You're not going to label. They were non-compliant, really. Everybody has rights. The lady was not non-compliant with her shower. OK. Brandy. I just checked, and they still can't tell me whether or not I can take next Thursday off. Will you be able to fill in for me if I have to make it Wednesday instead? Oh, sure. Just let me know as soon as you know something. I will. Thanks. You're the best. Not a problem, Connie.
people like a think that abuse was normal. Tell him to go in there, like, yeah. don't hide behind the chainsaws. It's like, go in there and help mm -hmm. him. Yes. <laughs> Which is what? What's the first thing we do? Make sure they're safe. We make sure they are safe. Mm -hmm. If you feel safe walking in the room, walk in the room and intercede. If you don't, but now wait a minute. So is this something you would report? Yeah. yeah. And who would you report it to? The charge, the, charge, the, charge, the, charge. the house manager, the administrator. Bingo, the administrator. <clears throat> you can report it to those other people and should, but you have a legal responsibility to report it to the administrator immediately. Now, if you want to report it to those other people, that's fine, but you ha you are responsible to make sure that the administrator knows. But now, wait a minute, that's my best friend. And she's got kids, and she's single, and she has to, she'll lose her job over this. She should have stepped out of the room when she was having difficulties with him and asked somebody else to step in. Yes. But are you ever put in that position? That's my friend. I don't want to report them. They'll lose their job. Yeah, but you're there for the resident. Yeah. Yes. We have a mission to care for the elders that live in our care. Mm -hmm. And that has to be, we always do what's in the best interest of the elder. Do you see challenges to reporting? Yes, no. In this facility, do you have a culture that it's okay to report mm -hmm. suspected abuse or neglect or exploitation? Mm -hmm. Everything is reported. Good, good. Can you think of any challenges? Maybe just employee to employee conflict. Yes. If you were the only one who saw it, you might be afraid. They know I was the only one who saw it, so I have to be the only one who's going to report it. Yeah. So this person's going to get mad at me. Yeah. It's going to cause drama. They might, they're, they're probably going to be suspended immediately, and then you're going to be working short again. Mm -hmm. Going to be working by yourself. Yep. There are barriers, aren't there? But let's go back to we always do what's in. Because here's the, the question is, if they will do it this time, do you think they will do it again? Definitely. Do you think they've probably done it in the past? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is this circle of abuse. There is the person in the center that has been abused, who we've actually hurt. I don't care if there's real bruises or real abrasions. We have hurt them. And then there's the abuser. Those are the two people closest to the center, right? And then there's witnesses. And then there's the people who heard about it, right? In the break room or whatever. And then there's the people that see the behavior of the elder or the signs of abuse. We have to pay attention to what we're doing. So if your loved one were living in a nursing home, what would you do if they were abused? I'd pull them out of the nursing home. I'd be in jail. You might have to share a I'd cell. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is hard, isn't it? So, have any of you ever seen what you thought was abuse or neglect or exploitation? Not necessarily in this facility anymore? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. So it really does happen, doesn't it? Definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have to pay attention, and we have to know who's in the center of what we do. Okay, we've learned about reporting abuse and your obligation to report it. No question, you have to report it. You've learned about the definition of abuse, the different types of abuse, recognizing abuse after it's occurred, and reporting abuse. This concludes Module 2. Thank you.